Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. We're back. Thank you so much for staying in there with us. Playing a little bit of uh, a little soul music tonight. You know, we playing some uh, some songs that were samples to some of our favorite songs. Of course, little Isley Brothers, little Between the Sheets. We all know. That's a little bit of Biggie Big Popper right there. You know, I have to have with Marcus J. Mm-hmm. Coming to you live on LegacyInternetRadio.com from the Den and Mix a lot. We appreciate the love and support. You want to be down with us, call us 804-402-2893. Big Road, you was telling me earlier today that you had made some changes to the LegacyInternetRadio.com website. Uh, one thing in particular you made a change to. You want to tell the listeners about it? Yes, um... As everybody knows, the greatest time of the year started yesterday with um, March Madness and college basketball. It's beautiful. And on Thursday and Friday, there will be a lot of non-productive people at work. I'll I call just, it out. I just hope they, yeah, I just hope they call out or something. And, but the more important thing is, as we did last year, we are going to invite all of our listeners to join our bracket. We would like for you to go to the website. You click on the NCAA link, create a tournament bracket. Now, we're not giving nothing away, but it's more a lot of bragging rights. And I would like to say last year, I destroyed these two guys last year in the tournament bracket. <clears throat> Maybe because, you know, I know more about college basketball than they do. Or, you know, I'm just brilliant. Either way, it doesn't matter. I won it last year, not going to repeat. So, with that being said, myself, Marcus J., Carl Banks, and, and Grizzly will do a bracket. See if you can beat us. Well, y'all might be able to beat them, but y'all not going to beat me. I challenge anybody to put a bracket out there if you think you can beat me, but it's not going to happen. So, from what I said, go to the website, click the NCAA link, create a bracket for yourself, and, you know, enjoy beating these other three because you're not going to beat me. I, I, we realize. We, we, yeah, he's full of himself already. Uh, I realize that you're a great bracketologist, uh, Big Rube. Um, I was wondering if you would be interested in giving us any tips as to any dark horse teams that we should be keeping an eye on it, that we know here in the Richmond, Virginia area. Uh, there's a team here locally that has been creating havoc upon the uh, NCAA over the last couple of years, particularly this year. Uh, that team, of course, being Virginia Commonwealth. Any thoughts on uh, how they may do and how uh, any of the other teams that are out there without giving away too much of what your bracket is going to look like? Well, um, my personal allegiances will not allow me to talk about VCU. Yeah, because they're, know. they're not they're not in my mind or anything like that. So, you, you, you know, whatever. I don't care about you. How many beers did the CAA get? One. Because <laughs> they're terrible. <laughs> But what I will say is, you know, hopefully, the, the greatest thing about March Madness is there are two teams from Virginia in the NCAAs. And it's not taking you. And back. that's, and it's, um, it's. VCU. VCU and Liberty. Right. Who are the second 20 lost team to ever make the NCAA. They play tomorrow night on first four. And then also tomorrow night, we have a treat. We get to watch UVA. Get beat by Norfolk State in UVA NIT? in the NIT wow. is going to be great. That would be great. You That'd know, be funny. We would, one day, you know, in the, in the current future, we'd like for Union and Virginia State to go to something called a big dance. But it, it is what it is. I can't really talk. And if UVA, UVA wins, man. what y'all gonna say next week? I mean, I don't really care. <laughs> me, right. me personally, I don't really care. I just think it would be funny. Are we giving? Uh, do, do, do you? Are you? Are you telling everybody a little bit about your predictions as far as Final Four? Or are you just going to tell them? Well, refer them to Legacy Internet Radio. Well, I say go to Legacy Internet Radio. I will give you one Final Four Give us one, Root. That I feel is going to make it. I feel like the Hurricanes of Miami will make it to the Final Four. You, do you have a sleeper? Do I have a sleeper? Yes, I do have one sleeper. Um, You know, that Belmont team is good. Is Senior that Lane Greenboro? team. Uh, yep, Greensboro. Yeah, I feel um, the senior laden team, the 11 seed. I forget who they played in the first round. But that team's good. That okay. team is good. And I expect them to go far. 
You know, I have to happen with Marcus J. That's the uh, March Madness moment. We're going to kind of have a little bit of a moment for the rest of the period while the games are being played all the way down to the Final Four in the early part of April. So uh, follow Big Rube's, uh, uh, follow Big Rube's suggestion or hope that you guys do brackets with us here. The four of us will be doing one. Uh, we will probably kick Big Rube's ass this year. Not sure, but you figure the odds with it being three of us or one of him. This will be one of the few times at Carlton Banks and Marcus Jeff be on the same team. We usually at odds uh, on, for a variety of reasons, but this will be one called, and I think uh, you can agree that because of the level of arrogance that we just heard, yes. I don't think there's any way that one of the three of us, Grizz, you join in here too, mm-hmm. we, one of the three of us needs to bust that ass. Oh, we're going to always going to bust that ass. When he comes in fourth like place, I'll 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 like I'll like I'll like the record. I'll say it. Super, 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 super pause, but um, yeah. what, what what I will say is that Ruben, um, yeah, I give you credit for being confident in your abilities to pick. But I've been known to pick a couple brackets myself and win a couple of uh, let's say uh, funds over this period over this time of year. So me just too. Look out, just look out for me. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. I want to move on to the National Basketball Association. Oh There's a couple of quick stories that I want to get into first. Um, we'll, we usually start with the Knicks. We'll end with the Knicks tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to start on the West Coast with the Lakers. The we West know Coast. Uh, that Kobe Bryant suffered a pretty traumatic looking ankle injury a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of days ago, uh, and we know that he's also been stricken with the flu as well. What's going oh, on yeah. with your What's going What's going on with your Lakers and how they looking these days? I mean, you know, we took that L to um, who was it? Doesn't matter. I lost. You took no, we, L. Didn't, we didn't lose. We did you we won lose last Indiana? night. Did we? Lo- we beat Indiana. You won <laughs> last night. I don't know who we lost to, but you know, Kobe got Jalen Rose, and it, it was sad. And for those of you who have no idea what that is, basically, when a jump shooter, uh, when a, a person goes takes a jump shot, they are in the rules. They are allowed to come down safely. However, what happens is that the defender in question decided that he wanted to undercut Kobe, and which and for Kobe to defend himself or protect himself, he came down and he hurt himself. Now, like where? Like his ankle? Oh, okay. I believe. Um, but he can't play. You know, he, he sucks. Sh- if you're a Kobe hater, please call Legacy Internet Radio at 804-402-2893, 804-402-2893. Or if you're a Kobe lover, call in on Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J. I had to put that out there because, for the record, everybody know I'm a Kobe hater, but a Vanessa lover. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, y'all can hate all you want, <laughs> but, you know, when you got one of the five or ten best players ever in the NBA playing on your team, it, and he goes really down hard. He he is one of the ten best players ever in the NBA. Okay, ten ever? best ever. Yeah, dude, please. No, yeah, never. We do this argument all the time. Yeah, 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 I mean, you know, you could, you know, Mr. Banks over there with your limited basketball knowledge. I don't expect you to understand. I, I I'll be honest with you. I'm gonna put him on the spot and ask him to give me seven guys better than Kobe Bryant. The clock is you really now. Just, yeah, right, yeah, right, right. Jordan, one, Magic, Elijah, one, three. Um, I'll give you those three. David Robinson. No. 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 What? But that's his four. And, and Elijah Wan is questionable. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was like, uh, Elijah Wan is questionable. Well, Bill Russell. Bill Larry Russell. Bird. You still have uh, two more to go. You, you give, a, give us a replacement. I gave you seven. Did you say Dr. J? I, he asked for seven. He told me he gave me a limit of seven. Uh, I'll go Dr. J. But. I'll go Dr. J. You made it that. We'll yeah. I'm struggling with the Dr. J. So for, 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 for the record, Dr. for the record, as, as a matter of fact, no, I, I gave him a, I gave him a quick out. He said ten. Give me ten. Oh, give me ten. Right. Okay, okay, I gotta give you two more. Uh, one more then. Um, one. You only gave us seven. You gave no, us seven. I gave him eight. I said Dr. J. Oh, and, that's uh, eight. I said Dr. J. I said Moses. Guy, Just give me two. Moses. Moses. Okay. Malone, yes. mm-hmm. credibility. No, not Moses. I meant Carmelo. Carmelo. You still there. Yeah, still shot. Yeah. Now, I mean, Carl, Carl Malone is questionable. He does. He's, He's number two cool. all time in scoring. Hang on, Carmelo is. Carmelo, no chips. Carmelo is number wow. two all time in scoring. No but, chip. but I think he, I think the fact that he doesn't have chips does kind of hinder him. LeBron? I think, I think that, uh, I, I think that David Robinson. Moses. You can't have David Robinson. You can't have Moses. You can't have Doctor. I meant 
Carl Malone, not Moses. Okay, 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 so no, you, you can't you can't have Dr. J. And and problem. you can't and a lot of You can't give me Dr. J. I can't give you Dr. J. I thought Dominique in that. You can't give me Dr. J. Yeah, you lost your mind. Anybody anybody that knows me knows that Dominique is my all time favorite player. But I'm also paying attention, and you can't say that Dominique Wilkins is a better ball player than Kobe Bryant. No, and, I, and I'm not a Kobe Bryant fan, but that's all right because I think he did great he for did, someone right. who, yeah. who, who, whose number one passion for the sport is not with basketball, it's with football. So I think he did. I think he, I think he did good. I understand where he's going. I just disagree with him. Um, I, I just disagree with him. Big, uh, big road. Finish your point, and then Grizzly's gonna jump in. So after that, Kobe tried to play against Indiana. Play the first half, decided I can't do it. Boom, we beat Indiana last night. Boom, we beat the Kings at home. It's the Kings. We, it doesn't matter in the NBA. Everybody's professional. All right. Now we still have a one game lead on Utah in the um in the overall, but we're only a half game down from number seven. All right. Because look. Golden State did the work last night against Houston, right. and it was beautiful. Look, Please. stop hating. I'm not hating. Just explain to me the cojones of a man, an NBA ball player, to go to the press to complain about somebody playing dirt. And then the NBA follows suit because they're crying because they don't want him to miss the playoffs. That's that's the equivalent of on the football field, somebody saying, oh, a defensive lineman said, oh, the left tackle under the fumble, he grabbed my cross. He's he just going to broadcast okay, it to the media. First of all, this is certain, the, certain thing you can, certain way you can Did you see the play? It. Yeah, I saw the play. Was it, was it a foul? It's, it's was, it a, was it a foul? It was a foul. Thank you. That's all I need to hear. Ain't no half step in Marcus J. Um, I'm I let you have like Ru- it. Ruben now. will get credit from me because, and anybody knows, uh, you know, I'm a homer for my team, but I'm also fair. And, you know, weeks ago, you know, Ruben was talking about how the <laughs> Lakers would make it into the playoffs. And I didn't think at the time, the way they were playing, that they would have a chance. He saw through. Um, my team was playing well at the time, and his wasn't. Now that role, those roles, roles have reversed. certainly reversed, and we'll mm-hmm. talk about the Knicks at the end of the segment. But uh, he is definitely looking good right now with regards to what his opinion was. So I'll give him his I'll give him his credit. Ain't no how stepping with Marcus De- Marcus J live in the den legacyinternetradio.com and then on MixLR. Call us up, be down with the show and part of the discussion at eight zero four four zero two two eight nine three. If you're listening to Ain't no half step with Marcus J. And you're interested in hearing your man Iman Ali out of Jersey City, New Jersey. Stay with us. He's coming up in the next segment. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. We want to talk now, Grizz. I'm coming to you first. Mm-hmm. You got the Miami Heat uh, going into Boston tonight on a 23-game winning streak. Uh, are they the best team in basketball? Right now, they are. I hate to say it as a Nick fan, but um, can anybody beat them? Of course. Um, I see Indiana giving them a good run in the playoffs. But they beat them during this run. And I, I see the Knicks with a, a healthy Knicks squad giving them a good run in the playoffs. Those are the only two teams I can see giving Miami a, a, a nice run. Um, if the playoffs, as the season was to end today, I think they would sweep both teams, you know, considering uh, the Knicks are beat up. And I know we're going to talk about that later, but. Hey, I got to get my hats off to them. I mean, they they got what we call synergy it, it, uh, together as far as the team is concerned. I mean, anytime uh, the Birdman Anderson is just getting, you know, dunks and he's putting in at least six or eight a game, you know, with that team and the rotation that they got, um, hats off to them. I mean, they got two of the best players right now in the league on the same team. I mean, what can, what can I say? I would like to p- take something from Miami to pick at, but right now they don't have nobody hogging the ball. They don't have dissension in the locker room. They don't have anybody that you love to hate on that team other than Bosch Pauls. But I'm just saying, um, you know, got to give it to him. Rude, what you think? I mean, Miami is playing good right now. Can they beat the Lakers? At, <laughs> yeah, okay. they beat the Lakers. That's all I want to hear you say. They beat the Lakers with Kobe Bryant doing the street. Exactly. But but my thing is, I I'm gonna agree with you and, and say this. You know. The Birdman is getting work, right. and to me, it's sad in this NBA season that that dude does anything positive, and people are winning because of it. It almost annoys me because the dude is terrible. He's a perfect Why? example. He's a perfect example of a player. If you put on a good team, a role player can come uh, and contribute. And we're gonna, uh, you know, we'll use Kenyon Martin for an example. Certain teams, certain role players have certain roles 
on their team. So Bird, if, if, if <coughs> uh, what's his first name? I don't even know his real name. I just know Birdman. I just know his Anderson, Chris Anderson. Thank you, thank you, Marcus J. If Chris Anderson can get a contract with any NBA team, especially the Miami Heat, and can contribute to a championship winning team. I mean, Jawan Howard was on that team last year. I mean, I think he's still on. He's that still team. on it, but. You know, you don't. You just have to come. And really, most of those guys, if they picked up later in the season, you know, they're getting picked up to contribute for that playoff run. And you can't play five guys forty-eight minutes the whole thing. Yeah, and I mean, I guess my thing is, well, before I want to segue to something else. Banks, you got something on this? Because I want to well, segue. Well, man else. is doing what he needs to do. He's getting his ten and eight or eight and ten. He's right. doing the dirty work, like he's six and six. Hey, but he's getting it. He sucks. He's yeah. doing what he needs to do. He looks great with that team. team. Yeah, he looks perfect. <laughs> he looks like an awesome person. Awesome. You send him back to Denver, he looks like a, a jerk. I, yeah. think, I think the Miami Heat is the best basketball team that I personally have seen since the 98, 97, oh. whichever that Bulls team that went 72 and 10. Um, they're the best team that I've seen since that team. Um, obviously, you've had a couple of teams that catch lightning in the bottle and won the title. You had Detroit one year. You had Dallas one year, but you hadn't had any dynasties. This team right here is poised to become one, and I think the fact that they lost the first year was good. Mm-hmm. It was not only good for them, but it was good for the league because it would be boring as hell right now to watch them march towards their third title knowing that they could potentially win more. You know, For them to lose that year, it was like, I. Right, cool the second year are they gonna win can they do it and then they won the second year and then this of course being the third year now the thing is can they do it in a repeat you know so i think there's a lot of fun there but Mm -hmm. i'll be honest with you lebron james to me and i said this before he's the best basketball player that i personally have ever seen in my life now as far as and that's on the court you got to win the titles to be named with you know russell and and michael and magic and kobe and those guys you got to win the rings but i'm talking about physical physically the best player that i personally he is a perfect basketball player you got that he is an absolute flawless basketball player he has no holes in his game none and you can argue that Kobe had a couple you know at this stage in his career of course he he, he kind of filled them up but at this stage in his career if you compare it obviously it's 10 years of age between them yeah but or close to it but I don't see how there's any way they don't win the title who's going to challenge him they got the best player in the world they got a superstar in Dwight Howard and a star in Chris Bosh, and you got a bunch Dwight of guys. Howard. Dwight Howard. You mean but uh, you got Dwayne Wade? Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade. I'm gotcha, sorry. Gotcha, I'm, gotcha. I'm sorry. Um, but really? you know, but if you but if you look, <laughs> if you watch them play, right. the difference between them and some of the other teams around the league, Grizz, is their role players know their no, role. No role. They know their role. They know, like y'all mentioned Jawan Howard a minute ago. He mm. knew his role. You mentioned Chris Anderson. He knows his role. Mario Chalmers. Mario Chalmers knows his role. The you know what I mean? Man, These Ray, are Allen. The Ray Allen knows his role, even though he ain't playing that well this year. Oh, no, he but, has but, 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 you know, these guys know their role. So you add that to the greatest player, physical specimen in the game, mm. And a superstar in Dwayne Wade, and a star in, in Bosch, who I don't particularly care for Bosch's game, but he fits in perfect yeah. for them. Right. I just, I mean, you can you can make the argument, um, uh, you can make the argument that uh, uh, Oklahoma City is 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 possible, but I mean, Here, to me, it's formalities. Here's what I would say quickly, and I'll pass it to Big Rube. I think uh, Miami. You asked me earlier, can Miami be beat? And I say yes, and I use. The Chicago against Detroit before Chicago became the dynasty that they were. Detroit uh, uses their physical presence back in the late 80s, early 90s. And I think somebody has to slow the game up, preserve the ball, no turnovers, and play physical with Miami to be competitive. Because Miami doesn't have a big low post presence. So if you get a Tim Duncan or if you get... uh, of Roy Hibbert, somebody like that that can sit there and bang and then don't let Dwayne Wade and and uh, LeBron just running up and down the lane dunking on you. They got a shot, Root. You know, um, I, I wanted to say a couple things. Just And then this will probably segue to our next section. One, it's going to be tough to beat Miami, you know, but it's going to take somebody who has a low post presence. Right. You know, Indiana probably has a really good team provided they – 
they do things the right way, I think they can give Miami problems. They gave them last year problems, but ultimately I think they're the team to give Miami problems in the East. But the biggest question I have is, and I think this will segue into the into the next section, you know, who wants to who wants to win in the East? I mean, basically between number two and number seven, you have three and a half games separating everybody. Now, with that being said, the two division champs will get number two and three, but then you still got to fight for four through seven. I mean, Milwaukee has pretty much decided that they want to play, you know, Miami. But, you know, with Boston right above them three games ahead, they can still come back. But really, I mean, it's going to be a dogfight yeah. in the East. It, it, it is. It is. With the Knicks free falling, I'm going to come to them in a minute. Uh, and, and, and people want to give Boston, uh, Brooklyn credit, but they're playing about as mediocre as the Knicks are right now. Atlanta are who they are, and Boston is on the come up. So those teams right there, and, you know, Chicago's played the whole year without Derrick Rose. And Indiana, to me, is probably the most cohesive team. But then they have their nights where you wonder, you know, what the hell is going on with those guys. Now, let me ask you guys a question before we go on to the Knicks. Um, Jeff Van Gundy said that he would rather have the record for games won in a row. I think it's like 30-something games in a row rather than a chip. I'm going to ask Carlton Banks on this one first. If, and I know I'm going to speak to you in uh, Boston, uh, not Boston, I'm sorry, I'm going to speak to you in football language. Um, Would you rather have the Miami Dolphins of 1972 go all the way and win and just pull the names out because the next team I'm going to give you I, I don't want to have a long discussion on this I, I just just follow the analogy would you rather have an undefeated season like the 72 Dolphins did or would you rather um, go um, win at 9-7 and seven, like Giants did I'd rather win, win a chip personally that gets you better history because okay. you're a bigger part of the history. Patriots, Giants, four years ago. Yeah, I mean, and I'll ask it a different way to Grizz. Grizz, would you rather be the guy who had the scoring titles, and would you rather be the guy who got all the trophies for MVPs, a la Carl Malone and, Carl, and, and and Charles Barkley, or would you rather be the guy like Olajuwon and win two chips? Right, I want the championship because that epitomizes, that, that cements your accomplishment. I mean, I think an MVP... MVP just means you're a good individual player. You know, you're the best individual player in the league, but it doesn't mean that you're a champion. Right. You know, and so, yeah, definitely. So, Rube, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll ask you, and I ask them that way, you know, for a reason. I'll ask you the same question that Jeff Van Gundy was asked. Would you rather be in the record books for winning more games in a row and then losing in the finals, or would you rather go 42 and 40, barely creep into the playoffs, and win the chip. I mean, that's what the Lakers about to do this year. Creep into the playoffs and win a chip. Yeah, he, so that's he, what you'd rather do. Oh, I mean, that, 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 it's all about you winning a chip. Lil Wayne was sitting you know, on last you, week. But you, don't, but you don't sit here and, and play for we'll records. A it's cool to have records. It's cool to have awards. It's cool to have a big wall with all your trophies and yada, yada, yada. But real talk, it's about that ring, son. It's, that's what it's about. It's about being the best in the world, the best at what you do. And you say, look, I'm better than all y'all punks. And I got this chip right on my ring finger showing it. Ain't no house tapping with Marcus J. The last thing I want to get into is the New York Knicks. We know that they embarked last week on a uh, West Coast trip in which they... Well, first of all, Grizz, I'm coming to you first on mm. this one. You should be shaking um, my head. Yeah, well, Coach Woodson said before they left for the trip, five-game trip, last game, of course, is tonight in Utah, that they wanted to go and come back three and two. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, they've lost the first four games, most of which have been without Carmelo Anthony and Tyson Chandler and Stoudemire. Amari Stoudemire, all three out with various uh, levels of knee injury. Of course, Stoudemire is out for the season. Uh, Tyson is day-to-day, and Carmelo is uh, out, out, I believe, until Wednesday. Yeah. He's not going to play tonight. Um, What's wrong? I, well, see, I'm going to ask you. Well, all right, well, if you want my comment, all right, I'll give you, I'll I'll get, I'll get, I'll give you my commentary. First of all, the Knicks are just a damn mess. Oh. They're a damn mess. <laughs> and, he, and here's what it is. I, I mean, a lot, a lot of it has to do with the coaching. Mm-hmm. Because when you look at the fact that Mike Woodson, uh, who got a lot of kudos for how he turned the Knicks season around last year and the beginning of this year, as good as he was coaching then, it's as bad as he's been now. When you look around, you got to injure Carmelo Anthony, injured you know, players, and you look at the Knicks and you got uh, Raymond Felton, 
Mm-hmm. You got Iman Shumpert, you got James Wright, you got James White, Kurt Thomas, and and Tyson Chan. Who the hell is gonna score? I mean, really? I mean, anytime you got your five best players on the floor, you give yourself the best chance to win. If you don't put your five best players on the floor to start the game, you're not giving yourself the best chance to win. J.R. Smith, we know he's been coming off the bench. He was a candidate for sixth man of the year for most of the season. Now, all of a sudden, uh, he slacked off a little bit because he's gotten you know a lot more time on the court. But he's got shooter's elbow. He, he, yeah, <laughs> but he's one of your best players, especially with Carmelo Anthony being out and injured. Right. So, I don't understand why he's not starting. I'm going to tell you what really annoyed the hell out of me last week was we knew that Carmelo had the bum knee, but he played in Golden State, and and a lot of people think that he played in Golden State just to see if he can give it a go in Denver, where he still, he had a bad knee. Now, I I, I said a lot, I want to get your opinion on this. Do you think that he should have played in Denver on that bad knee because it was his old town? No, hell no, he shouldn't have played. I mean, we need Melo, and I say we as Knicks fans, we need Melo for the playoffs. I mean, the worst case scenario, we're not going to drop below number four with the East being like it is. You know. So, you know, let's 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 be smart about it. Now, what I will say, uh, contrary to what you were saying, like who, 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 who is Woodson supposed to play? I mean, the front office has to give, uh, do a better job with surrounding. I, 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 had a, I had an issue with picking up Jason Kidd this year. Um, he's come through. But, I mean, I looked at the game this weekend with the Clippers, and I thought it was a hoop it up team. I didn't see nobody on the floor high, high, you know, height taller than 6'5". But, but see, here's the thing with that, though. Here's the thing with that. Jason Kidd is a good pickup for the Knicks if they play him appropriately. If they play him appropriately. If they play him appropriately. When, when Raymond Felton went down in December uh, in Christmas game with the broken finger, mm. Jason Kidd Step got up. a whole bunch more time at that time, right? But you didn't, And you also didn't have Shumpert. Because right. Shumpert was still on his way back from the knee. He's injury. on his way. But check this out. You're playing James White a lot of time now. Right. When you got those guys back, mm-hmm. why wasn't you, playing, you playing him before? when you didn't have Shumpert and you didn't have uh, Raymond Felton? So this is what I mean when I say that you're mismatching. The team is not that great, but it's not that bad you, either. You know, you started off 18-5, and five, but I'm wondering... That. Which Knicks team do we have? Do we have the 18-5 and five team, or do we have the team who, in the last 40 games, is a game under 500? 500. Who the hell are the Knicks? Well, it's, it's, it time will tell, I think, if they nurse Melo back and Chandler, if he's day-to-day, he comes back. And let's say we get the last 10 games out the way with the, with the full lineup and get ready for the playoffs, that will give us the telltale sign. Right now, I'm not too concerned. Rube, I know you wanted to say something about because we go hard on your Lakers. So, come on, give us Knicks fans uh, your peace of mind. Well, I'm not going to actually go hard on the Knicks. I guess my question is, how soon do you really want – is Carmelo that important for y'all to win a fourth, fifth, or sixth seed? I mean, a fourth or fifth seed because right now – we ain't going that far. Well, right now you're a third seed, but Brooklyn's a game behind. We can – Boston is two and a half behind. I mean, you can see and tell me, well, we're going to be out Brooklyn, we're going to be out Boston. However, you're 0-4 on your road trip right now, which really isn't that good. I see your and, point. And don't get me wrong, I need y'all to beat Utah just as much as y'all want to beat Utah. Okay. Because we don't need that pressure. I'm trying to get away from no, that pressure. I understand, I understand where he's you know? going. He's, 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 making, he's making a very good point. I mean, mm-hmm. what are they going to do? But see, here's the thing. I was one of those people like Grizzly who thought that Carmelo should have sat all last week. You know, for him to play those two games, the first in Golden State and the second one in Denver, I thought was a poor idea. If you're talking about getting your knee drained, then go ahead and well, do it. What you waiting for? And you come out and you say that you're not gonna get your knee drained because you don't want you don't you don't like needles. Like really, yeah. all them damn tattoos you got, you don't like freaking needles. How Mello dumb is that? Oh, yeah, he did. Just like you know, just <laughs> like you know, just like Mike Woodson. Sure the Daily News ain't just, just a like Mike Woodson, <laughs> just like Mike Woodson also said that he you know hopes that they go three and two. Like like really, like these people. People right now, it is it's almost it's, it's almost like you know. And I was having this conversation with Kate up earlier. It's one of those things where there's certain franchises that are cursed, and there's certain yeah. franchises that are not. Like the Knicks won their last title, you 72. know, in 1973. Okay, that's the last time they won a title. Before but they've gone. had they've had decent teams in the interim, but. 
you know, why weren't they able to pull it out when you got teams like the Lakers, who also had some down years in that time frame, particularly in the er in the early and mid seventies. But they've won something like seven, eight, nine titles in point. that time frame. You know what I mean? Now, no one's going to tell me that in the forty years, in the forty years since then, mm -hmm. that all forty of those teams, uh, teams that won the title, had better years cumulatively right. than the Knicks had in that same 40 years, okay? So that tells me that there's, there's got to be a cloud somewhere, man. There's, there's bad karma or something going on with the franchise juju. when you got poor coaching that cost you the chip in 94. Don Nelson. No, that was that was. No, I'm just saying we just going about the bad, the bad oh, coaches yeah, oh, over yeah. for that. You, you give me, you give me heartburn <laughs> yeah. doing that. But you, you, you had poor coaching in '94 cost you a chip, and you had, you know, Patrick Ewing getting an injury uh -huh. in '99 cost you a chip, you know. And then now, when you have a team that's playing well, and you torpedo it because you start getting, you know, a little bit antsy with regards to how you coach it, and and you know, I don't want to put it all on Mike Woodson, but. You need to figure out how to get them boys to not be standing around when Carmelo was was got has the ball. Keep it moving like they did when they was eighteen and five. And when he's off, you need to step up. Somebody, Somebody needs to step, needs to step up. up. Why didn't they just leave Carmelo Anthony in New York and be like, "Yo, sit for this road series, get well, and when we come back be home?" Because the inmate was running the assignment. Yeah, I don't. Th I, don't he, I don't think Woodson runs that. Team. I think he wanted. Mm -hmm. I think he runs the team, but I think he got trumped. In this situation, because I think Carmelo, because he didn't get to play in Denver last year, wouldn't play in Denver this year. And he still did and, play. And, 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 yeah, and they booed his ass off the court. Mm -hmm. He ended up leaving the huddle in the middle of a huddle. He walked and off. You can see in the tape where his teammates was like, where is he, he going? going? I mean, yeah, and you know the and the injury to um uh, the center. Start him out. No, Chandler. Chandler. Well, that was just a freak injury. You expect him to get hurt. And I understand yeah, we'll that. Chandler, do, without Chandler, Chandler is actually the rock that holds y'all team together. You know, with Carmelo, without Carmelo, with Starmer, without Starmer, with Chandler, without Chandler, y'all are a horrible team. That is, I wouldn't say I a horrible team. I can't you know, say horrible. I mean, we're we're playing too uh, shit. Horrible <laughs> four right now. With, I mean, you're on what? On three without Chandler? Was hard, I, mean, I mean, any any team. But you're not any, getting any, close to winning. Yeah, but any team, you know, I think I think you're being a little disingenuous by saying horrible team. Yeah. Any yeah, te any yeah. team that's missing the three best players on their team. I mean, show me what Miami does. You take LeBron, well, Wade, no, and Bosh off that, that team. But I understand it. But I guess what I'm saying is, one, the, the the leader you have left is J.R. Smith, who is playing very well. <laughs> but J.R. Smith is into I gotta do this by myself. Oh, this is the first shot. The, I yeah, the, the shot, shot is I, right. take, yeah. I mean, you know, you you basically he, you become gunslinger J.R. You just brought him back from like five years ago when he. When nobody wanted it. But see, here's the thing with J.R. Smith, and you know, old Nick fans can can appreciate this analogy. J.R. Smith is John Starks. Yeah, you can always go over that. <laughs> that, that so we go ride right with him, and, and you know, but John Starks <laughs> wasn't good without Patrick. You. He was terrible. Well, but he was still stocks was still oh, throwing he, him up. J.R. Smith is leaps and bounds more physically talented, talented than, awesome. than what John Starks was. But the, the analogy is the hot and cold, yeah. you know, you know, never seeing a shot that he didn't like and all of that kind of stuff. That's where the analogy is. But uh we want to leave it there. I'm gonna take another break. Uh from let's go you know, Knicks. Yeah, yeah, let's go Nick. Go next. We're gonna take we're gonna take a break. And Clippers. when we come back, we got my main man, Iman Ali in Jersey. City, New Jersey. He's coming on the live line. Uh, we're going to do some what the hells. We got a couple of things. He's a local comedian. He's got an announcement that he wants to share with the listeners. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. We're excited to have him. We're going to take a break. We're in the den. LegacyInternetRadio.com. Ain't no half stepping Marcus J. Be back in a minute. Yep, yep.